So my job here is, the, is to help the format. I will ask Ja um, a few questions, uh, probably about 10 questions, and she's got a few slides to illustrate her points, and then we'll get to your questions. So we're not gonna have a talk as such, we're going to have a bit of a dialogue, and I emphasize that we'll try to get you to your questions quite quickly. One last point is, um, if anyone objects to being recorded, you'll notice there's two cameras, we intend to publish this online, and if you object to be, your face being there, we'll figure out the blur button. So, let me know afterwards if that's a problem. So, firstly, uh, <coughs> you, you ready now, Ja? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is Ju Ja, and uh, she is uh, from Shanghai most recently. Um, but how about Ju, you, you give us a bit of background about where you were born, um, how you were, you were educated, and what did you do upon graduation? Thank you, thank you, Terry. Um, thank um, HQ for um, um, having me here, and uh, I uh, want to take this opportunity to share my story and uh, how I made uh, venture investment in China. And uh, to get started, I um, what would like to um, introduce myself and uh, my career uh, parts to you guys. And uh, my first slide. <coughs> I was born in uh, Jindezhen, Jiangxi province. Uh, it's in the middle of China. Jindezhen is uh, actually it's very, uh, very famous. Um, it's called the porcelain capital of China uh, because it's produced uh, Chinese ceramics uh, like for more than 1,000 years since the Song Dynasty. So um, it's a very old and small town in Jiangxi province. But I have no idea about how to make uh, the porcelain vases because I studied finance and accounting. I only know the numbers and the modeling things. So actually I started, um, I got my uh, bachelor degree in financial management in Peking University. And uh, then I uh, studied further in the University of Hong Kong and got my master degree uh, of accounting. And uh, then in 2007, on the top of the uh, bull market, uh, you know, um, everybody knows, and I decided to uh, start my career as an equity analyst to be involved in the amazing app capital market instead of being an accountant. So I uh, became an um, analyst in the retail uh, sector um, in Hong Kong. Uh, then I saw the uh, uh, Hansan index uh, broke the 30,000 and then global financial crisis came. So I saw the Hansan index collapsed and dropped like more than 68% less than a year and uh, which made me become a, a you know, conservative and a skeptical analyst in Hong Kong. So uh, that is where I start my career as an equity analyst. I uh, worked uh, in Hong Kong for two years and then I came back to uh, China because at that time in 2009, the chi China's growth enterprise market opened. There were a lot of different um, fast, fast growing companies went public in China. So I, I thought there were more opportunities. So I went back and uh, uh, began my, uh, uh, as a chief analyst in Citic Securities. It's the China's largest securities firm um, uh, in 2009. So I um, actually spent five years as an equity analyst in the light manufacturing industry. Um, what is the, this kind of industry? Basically, it's a very large industry, uh, include some, you know, the paper and the packaging companies, toy makers, home appliance, appliances, and all, most of these uh, companies are the market-oriented private companies. They basically, the small, mid-sized, and uh, um, they are very, uh, they grew up in a very competitive market in China. So um, I spent five years there and communicate 
with the corporate management and uh, provide the professional uh, investment solutions to the um, in, uh, institutional investors fund managers uh, at that time. Uh, then there is another uh, crazy bull market in 2015 in China. Basically, it's a kind of man-made, um, driven by the liquidity bull market in 2015 in China. So, um, um, and they collapsed again. Um, at that, uh, at that uh, moment, I'm thinking that maybe I, um, um, I found out actually the asset management industry in China is still in, it was uh, still in the early stage and uh, there were limited good asset managers in China. And I also want to know the new trends about the technologies you know, the old fancy names like the artificial intelligence and uh, uh, the Internet of Things and uh, VR, AR, all sort of things. So because I always, uh, you know, um, talk to the mature manufacturing <laughs> companies, they have, um, uh, you know, slowed down growth and uh, it's, it's kind of boring actually. So, um, so I decided to um, shift from the mature uh, industries to the startups, and uh, I most uh, I used to, to dealing with a lot of financial data, and uh, then I enter into a market with no data or limited data, and uh, based on uh, imagination sort of things. So then I. Uh, 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 shift from sell side to buy side, and uh, from the big players to the startups. So um, I started the venture capital in 2015. So, I mean, getting involved in the venture capital market is pretty hard. I mean, I know around uh, only about 20% of people in Australia who set out to raise a venture fund, it ever actually works. So, how come you were so lucky? Um, yes, I'm kind of lucky <laughs> uh, because uh, actually I um, had a very long-term relationships with uh, uh, Chinese some leading um, listed companies uh, um, when they uh, went public and uh, actually I interact with them and I know what kind of uh, things they want and so at that time I figured it out and uh, there are some um, uh, uh, entrepreneurs I was very familiar with, they actually, they have uh, sufficient cash flow, but they, their growth is, uh, has uh, slowing down and they're looking for some new technologies or new <coughs> markets to be their new uh, growth engines. So actually they have made some uh, investments before in the two to three years, but actually they lost a lot of money they don't have professional to, you know, help them uh, uh, look for the right targets. So, um, <coughs> due to this reason, so I um, uh, talked to them and uh, I uh, started as a corporate VC with just a one limited partner called ORG uh, Technology. It's China's leading, the largest uh, can maker in China. It's uh, like, um, it's, um, it's net profit. It's net profit is like um, uh, two. Let me let me let me, let me <laughs> calculate. It's like two uh, two hundred million um, Australian dollars for their net profit. So they have a lot of cash flows, but they 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 don't have uh, very uh, high growth at that moment. They're looking for some targets. So. I um, talked to them and uh, I uh, want to find some new technology to uh, help them look for the new uh, growth. So uh, that's, I started this uh, venture capital and uh, I actually I have done pretty well. In 2017, I have uh, another two new uh, LPs for my venture capital. So, so the, you had, your first fund was 50 million? It's seven, 70 million oh, because oh. The first fund is 70 million. Oh, 70 million. Because oh, right, at that time, it's a lot of money. Yeah. You know. <laughs> 70 million. And the second fund was it's 50 million. Yeah, yeah. So, how were you able to raise this? 
this is at a time when the venture capital, early stage venture capital B2C market was collapsing in China. Yeah. So how were you able to go against the trend? Um, the, um, actu the, the investing company uh, in my first uh, uh, fund uh, has uh, done pretty well. And uh, I have uh, close connections with this entrepreneurs and uh, I shared with them my um, insights and what I want to invest in the next three to five years. So um, they actually um, agree with my um, insights and my investment hypothesis. So uh, we made this down. Okay, so perhaps could you share with us what was different about your investment thesis? You know, for us, so for instance, you were in B2B mainly rather than B2B, yeah. B2C or B2B2C. Yeah. So can you tell us about um, well, firstly, who were your strategic partnerships? Okay, so this the three uh, strategic partnerships I have. They are the three uh, limited partners I had. Uh, one is ORG Tech and Slack and uh, Huayuan Can uh, the Maker, and basically they are the uh, China's leading um, um, manufacturers um, in the Asia market and. Uh, they are traditional industrial um, leaders and they have a lot of cash flow. They have uh, sustainable um, uh, uh, revenues and earnings, um, but they want something new. Um, so uh, I talked to the entrepreneurs of these companies and uh, uh, like the ORG Tech, um, the company ha has invested um, some money in the digital marketing and uh, the, the some consumer sector uh, new technology things so I'm looking for some uh, uh, targets for them and uh, the slack slack is actually provide the um, uh, very precision instruments in the in the market they work with some uh, gas companies and they are looking for the cyber securities um, players in the um, uh, I, uh, industry control system, these kind of things. So, and, and all of these are not SOEs. All of these companies are not state-owned enterprises. No, no, no. They're all private they're entrepreneurs. Private, okay. yeah, they, they're so they're real entrepreneurs and real money, not um, play money, government play money. Real money. So, okay. So, what was the hypothesis of investment that you developed from this? Okay. So. Um, I have uh, I spent the first half year uh, investigating the hot topics in the market like the B2C, O2O, VR, AR, and some uh, movie uh, ent entertainment industries. And I, I, I think, wow, they're so crazy because the valuation are very high, um, uh, especially for me from the you know, the capital market. Why in the, this uh, unlisted company, just uh, two or three people, they offer like 200 million Australian dollars valuation. Why? They, they barely have no revenue. Just the idea. So I, I, I think uh, at that moment, I kind of lost, you know. So I, I'm thinking, no, 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 I cannot do that. I should uh, figure out what I have, what we have what we have at this moment, what, what resources, beside, besides money, what resources we have in the industries, or what kind of talents we have. So um, I, um, this is my investment uh, uh, criteria I uh, basically set up for my investment team. Um, we are looking for the startups can solve the real and uh, the big problems because you know some of the B2B um, uh, companies, they maybe uh, have some fancy software, uh, the kind of technology, but no one would like to pay for this kind of software or this SaaS platform, these kind of things. How can I know that they can real um, uh, solve these problems? I can investigate into the production chains I have I'm very familiar with and ask for them whether the kind of technology or products or service can solve your problem. That's the one thing I um, 
uh, focused on okay. to uh, so yep. yeah cool so what did your portfolio end up looking like is that the next uh, thing you mean the yeah, uh, portfolio no no okay well give us an I, example uh, yeah. Yeah, if you've got an example of an investment that yeah would I, be I i want to add two two well, two more things first right. is um they the you have to dd the the founding teams you know the founders they should have the same values with 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 our team because it's very important people is the most important things when you invest and secondly we all you know when when i made an investment uh, I, the first thing I should keep in mind is a Chinese typical thing is there is uh, Alibaba and Tencent and uh, the big players in the market. And uh, what if I invest a company and they pr they they I made maybe uh, two, twenty to three uh, to thirty billions in this company and they build up something and then Alibaba said I give you the product for free and. Uh, Okay, then my uh, investing company gonna die. That's his truth. We should keep in mind. So uh, the basically the startups should have excel in the specific industry. They have some high barrier for Tencent and Alibaba to enter. So that's the most important things. That's what. That's why I invested in the cybersecurity company because they have the uh, know how about this company. So, yeah. But let me uh, share some examples. Maybe you can have the general picture of my uh, investors. So, uh, Winix Tech is the top cybersecurity player in, in industry control system. We show it in ICS. Uh, actually, it's a top-down um, um, analysis. The the method we used uh, in two thousand in twenty sixteen, we have studied in this area cybersecurity. Because at that time, no, no one um, actually put a lot of money in this kind of industry. They have very uh, small uh, orders. They just got small orders from the, the uh, a few uh, companies, and it's not that big. And uh, I feel like, actually, the Chinese government gonna spend enormous money in this in the in this industry because they don't want only IBM, the kind of you know foreign companies to control this uh, area. So um, it's basically policy driven. The cybersecurity uh, players, I have a, a group of uh, investors uh, focusing on this area. Um, I gave a, a, a kind of platform things, and but it's in Chinese. It's the, it's, it provides sophisticated um, technology platforms to solve the problems, to avoid the cyber attacks uh, to this energy companies or gas companies, oil plants, this, uh, this kind of things. So it's the, the technology uh, uh, makes sense. It requires very high uh, core uh, technology to protect, protect this key infrastructure uh, companies or industries. So when is it um, um, tripled revenues every year since we made investments. And uh, it obtained the large order of uh, 20 to 30 million now compared to the two years. I just found out this uh, company, small company. Um, so um, at this moment, uh, I said it's in the second half year, um, uh, Tencent and uh, Ali actually focused on the industrial internet and uh, uh, well, luckily, this company may um, have some money from Tencent background um, um, funds um, recently. Finish uh, its close its new uh, financing at this moment. So that's why I think we should uh, uh, invest in a proactive way. No hot money in this area. If it's very hot and everybody talks about it, basically it's it is a trap. Highly possible. It's, you cannot. Uh, you, you just lose money in this area. So there is a one. It's the top-down and policy-driven um, market uh, 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 targets I focused. And uh, another one is actually uh, uh, a project I incubated for the ORG Tech. It's called a, a C2M platform for cans. C2M in China it means 
consumers to maker or manufacturer. So uh, we connect the um, consumers or customers to the branding like Qingdao Beer, this kind of uh, big uh, brands in China to connect them with the uh, clients or customers directly. Uh, because uh, bef previously there were a lot of distributors um, 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 between uh, these um, two parties, right? So we built up this um, C2M platform. Guan Guan actually rewrites the traditional mass production lines into a flexible and uh, autom automatic lines. So it's very easy. You have, maybe you have a Coca-Cola or a Qingdao beer, you have the, the cans, there is a QR code. You scan the QR code, you upload your um, uh, photos, and uh, it's sent to the cloud platform. They can send this, uh, your photos to the, uh, the production line directly. So they, in uh, less than a month, you can get the, uh, the beers or for your wedding or your um, birthday party, this kind of things. It's kind of interesting. But actually, the most important thing, it rewrites the traditional mass production lines into the small vo volume and high valued um, customized um, um, production line. So it's, we, we say it's the different product and the service in the digital time. It's totally different from the industrial uh, age because they provide the uh, standard and a lot of uh, same products and for cheap price, of course. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, one of the typical uh, examples I had. And uh, actually a lot of customers uh, place orders and uh, have the, their own customized uh, products for their weddings and birthday parties and the conference. And we have a lot of um, uh, improved the customer um, satisfaction in turn. And on the other hand, Qingdao Pijo knows the new generation, what kind of the young people like. Uh, uh, um, they want something new and uh, different so they can get the um, customer's data directly. You know, that is uh, very interactive and interesting things we have doing, yeah. So um, if you have any question, you can come up, okay? And the third one is, is uh, uh, education tech company I invested. Why? Because in the second half uh, year of uh, 2018, I figured out the uh, there are uh, tight restraints on the investment uh, markets, and uh, we don't have uh, enough money to invest. So I focused on my um, investment on the basically consumer sector with um, healthy cash flow. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, Targets so uh, education is one of the uh, steady and healthy um, industry. Um, so I target this company and uh, the programming education startup. Maybe some some of you know that it's it's actually quite hot at this moment. So um, the Baka it's interesting. It's used the the color as their logo. I, I don't know, I, <laughs> it's kind of, maybe kind of relationship, you know, with Australia. So the BACA um, edu, uh, uh, education, uh, programming education startup, um, they have very strong um, speech recognition, gesture recognition, and uh, the uh, face recognition technologies. They, this, they are uh, core technologies. They combine this, technologies with the, some um, uh, interesting the paper version products. So kids can make some, you can see from that, you know, this piano, paper version piano with these technologies and uh, uh, combines the hands-on lessons and the logic practice, practice with uh, uh, very interesting products. Basically in China, the, the, compa the peers, they uh, pr provided the online and offline courses with some cartoons. Actually, it's quite boring. Even even myself, I cannot focus like in five minutes. or kind of boring just to do the program things. But what if you made something out with your parents and uh, with something you can take away? So you, uh, it's a kind of um, interesting courses. It's distinguished from the other 
competitors in the market. So um, I think it's very interesting, and uh, we can we would like to provide a um, a platform to you if you can subscribe with our um, um, products, and you can maybe uh, get different. Um, um, about animals, uh, instruments, these kind of things differently uh, uh, by a monthly basis. And uh, you, we can get different um, um, courses from the, uh, the, the, the entry level to advanced level. So then uh, it became a, a platform to provide different kind of uh, products um, to the um, the customers or the families. So that is the the, the third uh, example I would like to share with uh, you guys. And uh, actually, it has worked closely with MIT Scratch team. You know, all the programming uh, education uh, based on the Scratch. And MIT Scratch team thought their uh, products are very interesting. And uh, they will uh, support them um, uh, with some marketing uh, in the uh, uh, global resources, so I think it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Okay. Um, okay. So let's move on. So overall, with your portfolio, um, you've made how many investments? Um, and Over twenty. Around twenty. Now, modern VC portfolio theory, um, people usually talk about making forty to fifty um, in order to get yeah. one that pays back. Whereas you've only made twenty, so you've gone much more in depth, yeah. top down, yeah. rather than uh, you know, uh, playing the number game. Yeah, if the company, if the startup has some uh, 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 relationship, you know, it's, uh, if they are the targets of our um, LPs, I will make heavy investment in this company to make it successful. Okay, yeah. so how are you feeling overall about your portfolio? Are you going to make a lot of money? Uh, uh, because it's B2B platform, it's not B2C, so it's not that cash burns, you know. And uh, luckily, most of my investing company are still alive at this moment. And, uh, and uh, one of the, my the biggest uh, 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 tar uh, uh, investing is called Manuel. It's also a leader in cybersecurity. It just, uh, it just uh, raised uh, 16 million Australian dollars. It will close this week. Okay. So, so this, com this company may um, go to public in one or two years. And the worst one, the, 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 the one you know, uh, has developed not that fast, actually raised one million uh, Australian dollars, and it can survive in a year. So, so. <laughs> okay. So, what do you, in summary, what do you think of the major lessons you've learned? You've been at this game for four or five years in China, yeah. what are the major things you learned about VC in China? Uh, the first thing, don't follow the, the trends, the hot topics. There are a lot of traps, and uh, the valuation, generally the valuation is not, uh, uh, you know, unbelievable. The second thing, uh, we should leverage not just the money, leverage our um, resources in industries, in the talents and what we can do um, uh, to uh, give our uh, support to the in startups. You know, the good startups, the, the great founders, they can actually uh, get a lot of money, but it depends on what kind of money they want. You know, they don't, wor they, they, they're not worried about get money, but what kind of money? And we basically help them with uh, resources and talents, to the, these okay. kind of things. Okay, another, uh, the last question sort of about uh, your experience in China before we turn to perhaps the relevance to Australia. Um, why are there so few female VCs in China? Uh, because because it's, it's very tired and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, and uh, we have to travel around and look, look looked up at hundreds of uh, projects. Uh, I think that's the main reason. And uh, but uh, but I like I like it. So <laughs> okay, yeah. right. So moving then to uh, you've been uh, in Sydney now for a few weeks. Um, three months. Th oh, three months. Nearly, nearly three months. months. Nearly, nearly three months. Okay. So you're an old timer now. 
Yeah. And uh, so what are the things you've so far spotted that look a bit different between Australia and China in terms of venture? Yeah, um, uh, actually I answered the questions uh, Terry asked me. I think at this moment I don't have the good answer to these questions because I just, uh, you know, know the obvious and uh, the superficial uh, the signs between these two markets. The one is, is, is very large market with uh, you know, a huge population and the market size different. And uh, um, I think um, I just uh, thought about, I just think about it and I think it's actually the basic um, research and the basic science um, in China is limited. But the innovation in, in Australia in specific areas like uh, healthcare, agriculture, the mining industry, these kind of things uh, are very uh, well uh, developed in Australia. And uh, in China, the most famous uh, companies are successful in how to, uh, in the application layer, these kind of things, and they can apply the new products, the new things in the large market very fast. So I think that is the different things I figured out at this moment. Maybe in three months later, I can give you some insights about the difference. So why did you end up in Australia? Um, um, it's not very sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still confused. Uh, where is this, the, the, the sun and the, the beach, the, you know, the, the kind of thing? But just the bushfires, yeah. Yes, yeah, I, I, I want some kind of balance between the work and, uh, um, uh, you know, life. Okay. By the way, I should mention, Jar last night got um, awoken by a fire alarm in yeah. her apartment building and spent several hours yeah. <laughs> outdoors. Yeah, in two hours. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so um, if you got any advice on, for Australian founders on thinking about whether they can or cannot raise capital in China? Um, uh, any, well, I think the first thing is what you can provide, your products or service, um, uh, is differentiate with others. And, uh, and the question I asked, what if Ali or uh, Tencent, they set up a, a team and uh, a talents with free um, products, whether your uh, products or service will be replaced properly, pro properly or in a fast way, so you will, you're gonna die. That is the most important thing uh, you should figure out if you want to survive in China because Ali and Tencent have a lot of money and they have, yeah. That's okay, true. so how that's do true. people contact you and then they ask you the questions? Uh, okay. <laughs> this is okay, my so contact. If you'd like to contact and have yeah. a chat with uh, a jar, Want please. to know more stories behind the data because that is the true, true things. The data is, <laughs> is just in the front, yeah. If you want to know the stories behind, contact me. I will tell you more about the brutal <laughs> or the real things <laughs> in China, okay? Okay, so let's turn it over to you folks. Um, can uh, people got some questions? This gentleman, first one. Um, Okay, um, this may not be related, but I've spoken to numerous bi um, business leaders in Australia in regards to doing business in China. And they said, oh, doing business in China is tough. Um, I heard something like, oh, it depends on the people you hire. Um, that could really affect your business. Some say it's the intellectual property. Um, yeah. so, what, um, so what's the main thing about, um, that we've got to look out for in doing business in China? Uh, it's it's true. It's very true. Um, you have um, you have to have some partnership um, in China who uh, who has the local, you know, the vice or the the kind of thing they know how to deal with um, government or the uh, uh, private companies or the startups. Uh, that's 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 very important things. You have to. You have someone help you um, to interact with the government or the business 
partners kind of things. You know, there are some uh, very famous international brands or international companies. If they don't have the local experts or local talents, basically they don't perform very well in China. So that's true. And do you find the, um, the same here as well, that you need local partners to do well in Australia? In, uh, uh, of course, I have, I, I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, basically, you know, the, the IP things you mentioned, um, it, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of problem. Basically, we, when we invest in some company with new technology, we will make sure its technology can ahead at least six months, <laughs> you know, someone may copy. It, that is possible. So, um, uh, but actually, we have this improve improvement in the IP things. You know, the government has worked on that. Yeah. Okay. So and you just got to make sure if I pay that you've got to be like six months ahead at least or more. Six months. Yeah. Okay. Ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jia. One other question about your cybersecurity, your main investment there. How long did it take you to select the company to invest in and complete the investment? Okay, the cybersecurity uh, players, I spent more than a year to uh, uh, look for the targets. And, uh, and the someone actually, um, I, I focused, uh, the, 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 the largest one actually has failed. So, so this one is the second one I invested. So it's the, the competition is, is very fierce in China because you know there are too many people there and uh, they work so hard. Yeah. Next question. This gentleman. Thank you, Jia, for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, what are the other support that you guys provide other than money uh, to, to the startups that you guys invest on? Okay. Um, for example, the uh, Winnex uh, it's um, actually, it's uh, uh, um, uh, cybersecurity company uh, provide the, the service for the industrial um, control system, right? I have a LP, it, it meant uh, Slack. Uh, the company has provided the precision equipment uh, with the same um, uh, uh, players in this area. So they can share the, you know, introduce my uh, investing companies to this kind of um, um, companies because this in key infrastructure uh, companies basically they are state owned so <coughs> you have to have resources to contact them right so the this uh, industrial leading players have this kind of resources with this um, um, because they have business with them so it's a way to provide a, a pr very effective way to introduce this kind of startup with this uh, leading state-owned um, uh, companies. It's very efficient and effective way. So that's one of the point uh, and uh, to attract this uh, startups, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I provide money and service, so, so please let me invest. <laughs> so that's the, that, that's it's one of the reason. And, and uh, also I um, introduced a CFO for one of the, uh, my investing companies. They, most of the, uh, the, the resource they want is talents. Talents is always the top thing they want most. So if, if we can uh, introduce some the talents and uh, appropriate uh, person to them, it will be very helpful for their, um, uh, both their business and their teams. Okay. Another question. So uh, does that mean that you guys can also provide the support to the Australian businesses to expand in China, uh, like do strategic partnerships with Australian businesses? Yeah, if you want to, in the consumer sector or the cybersecurity sector, and uh, in the you know production, uh, the manufacturing things, I think I can provide because I have some you know <laughs> contacts. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. 
for your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, it's very informative, and it's very good to see you again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, my, uh, does it seem like your career uh, across a traditional business, uh, like can maker, yeah. from some new business like cybersecurity, and you yeah. raised money from the traditional business and found the new business with the money you raised from the traditional business, which is very interesting. So uh, China has been talking about uh, uh, upgrading uh, their manufacturer capabilities yes. on Made in China 2025, and a little bit toned down recently. But uh, so did you, uh, do, do you, can you share the attitude uh, of the traditional business uh, on the like, upgrading their own manufacturing capabilities with their, with their money instead yeah. of in investing in the new business? Yeah. Um, it's a very good question. You, you are very familiar with Chinese market, I think. I have studied this um, for um, two years. First, um, if what we, we want you um, um, put this new technology in the companies, firstly, they have, they have to have data. They have to be online. And uh, actually, for the manufacturing companies, just the, the larger, the largest ones, they have money to do these kind of things. They have maybe Oracle's SAP, ERP system, these kind of things. But it's still a small part of the um, system upgrading um, of this the whole system. The 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 most developed. Uh, uh, sectors or industries in China with the online data and uh, the digital, the kind of no knowledge, just two. There is financial industry and uh, um, telecommunication industry. And other ma uh, the other uh, manufacturing industry, actually, they are under development. So, it, so I said it's still in the early stage for the 2020 uh, 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 plan technology they because they just have very small part and not timely and limited data with their production line so actually that that is what uh, Alibaba and Tencent wants to do but um, they have to have the team to excel in the know-how about the the manufacturer things so that is the barrier so um, actually I work with the largest manufacturer they have money to to buy this kind of te technology and to improve their capabilities, but it's still very hard. I, my, uh, our venture capital look like, like a bridge to connect the traditional manufacturers to the startups, but sometimes it's difficult. It's like, you know, same, speak different languages, you know. But I uh, spend a lot of time um, communicate, communicate with these two parties, and so that that's why I can make the, some um, uh, investment successfully. So that is the two, uh, two things I spend the most of time in, you know, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to probably list and uh, uh, do IPO of one of your companies. Yeah. Uh, where is the best place for this? Because like in Shen, in Shanghai, is a very high market cap, and yeah. uh, Shenzhen has a small one. And like, like uh, I mean, in a, like Hong Kong is probably not so favorable. <laughs> Where uh, would they list, you know, and uh, what would be the process? You know, the cybersecurity companies, I think, I'm 100 percent sure they will be listed in China because it's cybersecurity. <laughs> so uh, maybe the education uh, programming, uh, education technology, they will list it in Hong Kong market. But cybersecurity, they don't have the foreign investors because it's re restrict. So the uh, the two companies, um, Manu and the Winesec, this can may be listed in the next two years. And one for the the the, the Shenzhen, uh, the the gross uh, gross enterprise markets, and the other for the, the you know the Shanghai. Um, what is the si science and uh, technology. technology innovation board? Yeah, these two markets. Yeah, they they are uh, prepared for the sure. IPO. Yeah. Thank you for your uh, presentation. That Thank was you. very informative. Uh, so once the smoke clears and the sun comes out and you're all settled in in Australia, 
and the smoke alarm stop going off in your in your apartment. Um, what are you looking to achieve here in your, in your time in Australia? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, it's a very good question, and uh, I, I I would like to leverage my um, um, uh, experience and the knowledge in China and uh, in this you know new market, uh, but. Uh, at, at this moment, I, I, I don't find a, uh, a proper way to do that. But I think maybe I can, you know, do some networking and uh, find out. And uh, uh, one of my friend, uh, Rain, um, uh, uh, actually, um, he asked me a lot of challenging questions. What do you know about Australia? What, what, what kind of things you want to do here? Uh, you have so many things. How to put it together? So, what, what, so I, I don't know how to answer him at, at this moment. But Terry has sent me a roadmap for the Australian startups, the the, the growth, the story, and I will uh, do my research and to to find out the connections. I, I really want to do some cross border things to um, uh, maybe um, um, help the. Chinese um, investors to look for uh, opportunities in Australia or the um, to find uh, uh, introduce some products or service or kind of things into China. I think it's it's the what the most things I want to do. Yeah, and actually I have uh, some you know thing to, with Terry work on the cross border trade thing. So uh, I'm learning actually at this moment. So at the moment, Ray Nong is the hard guy, and I'm the soft guy. Ah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're a good cop. Yeah, I'm a good cop. Ray is a bad cop. <laughs> Thank you, Investor Mark, for that as well. Thank you. Anybody else got a question? Thanks, Jeff, for today's presentation. It's Thank very you. informative. And my question is more general in terms of the foreign investors. So when you are selecting the foreign investors, what kind of metrics you are looking for? Or what kind of gaps these foreign investors or we need to make up compared to the local domestic ones? You mean uh, when you are when you are selecting the uh, foreign uh, sorry, foreign founders. Uh, foreign founders. Foreign founders. So what kind of metrics you are looking for? Characters or cultures or what you are looking for? Basically, uh, is there, how to say that, values, that what they want to do, um, not just for money. They should have something you know, bigger, the kind of the big dreams about the, to solve the problems. That's the first and most important thing. You, you money is, uh, or make money or the valuation things is it's it's not that important like the baka um, the, uh, the coding the coding system the the programming education actually the guy is kind of rich but they want to make uh, cheap um, cheap products for chinese um, kids and help them uh, know the artificial intelligence the Internet of Things, the sensor, these kind of things in the early stage. So they can know things, not the old-fashioned way, old-fashioned things, this kind of knowledge. And they want to, and he wants to um, found a company like Chinese version Lego. That is what I want. You know, you have big dreams, and uh, but you have to down to earth. But you not have a dream, but you can do nothing. But that is not okay, right? So you have big, big dream, and you can make it uh, in the real world. That's the thing. Thanks. Okay, so um, I was introduced to Jia uh, by a fellow Australian of Chinese background, um, who is a VC, and uh, this gentleman um, introduced her to me and I thought oh, I'll have a meeting with her uh, and we had a lovely meeting and since um, we've had many hours together and I can assure you she's the real deal. Um, I've been around China for 30 years, she's the real deal so I suggest you have a good chat with her now. Thank you. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.